elements. What are they? Elements are first of all energies, or elemental forces as we know them from information found in myths and other sources. And in this word, as a rule, is used to refer to something that cannot be tamed by man. What else do we mean by the word elemental? Something primary, radical, and therefore chaotic, unpredictable. Everything that is not subject to human understanding, to human reasoning. The meaning is mostly negative, because as a rule, something that is not understood is feared. Respectively, our first task will be to free ourselves from the subconscious fear of the elements. Because if we don't, we will not succeed in what we are attempting. Otherwise, when we use this word, we'll be shaking like a leaf. Only from the idea that something might happen will we be able to awaken the elements within us if we are afraid that it might actually happen. No, we will not. The fact is that when a person uses this word, the word element, implying the forces of nature, it becomes instantly clear that this implication indicates to the person themselves that there is something out there something they will never know and will never be able to figure out. By using the word elemental and referring to the elemental forces, a person admits their own powerlessness before nature, basically refusing to not only to fight, there are things against which there is possibly no need to fight at all, but even refusing the mere fact of comprehension because how can it be possible to comprehend something that is not understood? How is it possible to comprehend something you will never be able to control? As a rule, people are not afraid of what they can presumably use as tools. That is, something that they will be able to command, control, submit to their will, and so on. So, if we want to comprehend elemental forces, awaken them, and not make them serve us, that would be an incorrect expression, but rather, if we want to learn to interact with them on the grounds that they are in fact capable of interacting with men, we must first change our attitude towards them, our own attitude. So what are the elements? What is this elemental force that we are going to work with, that we will try to awaken within ourselves? They are the basic primary elements that everything in this world is made of, absolutely everything. Depending on their different combinations, they create forms, images, and everything that has material and non-material manifestation. Everything is derivative of the elements. Take this chair. It's a combination of elements just in its own proportion. The human body is a combination of elements. The human mind is a combination of elements. And anything your gaze falls upon is, in fact, a combination of elements. The elements are the smallest constituents of the surrounding reality that are present absolutely everywhere. They are common to everything and are indivisible. In other words, when an investigation of a certain phenomenon, a part of nature, ensues, the first thing that scientists do is divide it, fraction into pieces, to the point that this fractioning becomes impossible. It is when the fractioning becomes impossible we have reached the elementary particle. Elements are elementary particles, but not in a mathematical or a physical sense, but rather in an occult sense, a more mystical or magical one. To get to know this magical, occult sense means to see what is common that unites all humans to see what is common that unites all parts of the living and non-living nature. It means to see that which is the building material for creation. It means to see the building material of reality, the building material of creation. One of the laws of magic says that if there are, for example, two palettes of different composition, and given that there is one common component between the two palettes, 
Both of them will be controlled via this mutual component. Is that clear? A very simple law. This way, when applied to the elements, this law states. If you contain the element of fire, and I contain the element of fire, and if John contains the element of fire, we are all connected via the presence of this element of fire. Accordingly, any change in the element's composition will lead to a change within me, you, and John. And in fact, the entire concept of magic is built on the simplest law. The whole concept of magical art is built on it find the common component, learn to control, not the whole system, but this one common component, and through it you will control the whole system. Is that clear? It's very simple. This is what we will try to learn, how to find common components and learn to control them. Subsequently, we will learn to control our own reality. It's all really easy. It is easy only on paper. There will be certain difficulties on this path that we will need to overcome. The first difficulty that everyone on the path of magical development encounters is freeing ourselves of our fears. First of all, as it was said previously, these fears come from a lack of understanding. Subsequently, if understanding develops, if it awakens, then these fears become secondary. The second difficulty that is surely encountered by those who wish to comprehend the world from a magical point of existence is their own lack of attention. To the greatest regret, we are inattentive, although we try to improve this quality in various ways. Human being is an inert creature. Why are human beings inert? Because it is easier this way. Being moved by inertia and in a definite direction, first and foremost, saves us a lot of energy. Because every time we start learning something new, every new comprehension requires an extra amount of energy. Like in our childhood, when we knew nothing about this world, it seemed very big and interesting. And as soon as we got to know it, in a more or less understandable way, how to use it, how to manipulate it, the world ceased being interesting, because we stopped introducing new elements into it. Respectively, attention is that one quality that will allow us to see this world in a slightly different way. And this quality, just like any skill, is given to some people from birth. We say about a person like that they are slightly differently built, are of a slightly different mindset. And this mindset allows that person to see what others can't. In that case, this is quite an outwardly individual. Therefore, the majority of people could perceive them as an outcast. And this is unpleasant. It is unpleasant if one is not ready for it beforehand. Thus, the second complication is the lack of attention. And this quality, attention, as already said, can be innate. That is when one is born with it. And is when it's called a talent, a special ability. But not everyone is talented from birth. Some have to develop and earn these abilities and talents, right? The fact that the attentiveness trait was not bestowed upon you at birth, there is nothing complicated or bad about this. You will simply have to put in more effort in order to improve this type of quality within yourself. But the trick is that actually everyone who comes into this world has this natural quality that is attentiveness. It's just that when one finds themselves in the egregorial environment, in the environment of grown-ups, of intelligent people that bring up their child in a way not to purposely destroy their attentiveness trait, but rather to ensure their offspring's comfortable survival, in this case, the child's consciousness undergoes different steps of programming, meaning that various stereotypical patterns and models are being built into it by society, not necessarily by the parents. And living according to these general scripts and models, you essentially don't spend the time on discovering something new, on deconstructing these models, or on building new individual models for yourself, as you would need them. This is why one's attentiveness as a rule atrophies with time, and usually when a child enters adulthood, that is during puberty, if they didn't manage to keep these abilities alive, then they practically disappear.
And the later in life you start to remember that you have these qualities, the more difficult it will be, respectively, by activating them anew. But difficult doesn't mean impossible. When something is difficult, you will simply need to spend more time on it. And you should be ready for this, because it is possible that you are the person who will need to be improving this ability, and that its awakening will require more time. People with a child psychotype may perhaps have an easier time achieving a result here. A person with a child psychotype is someone who is discovering this world. Respectively, the attentiveness trait is an essential factor in comprehending this world, which is why they possess it. A person with a parent psychotype comes here in order to structure and direct this world. Therefore, you understand that this quality, their trait of attentiveness, is a bit atrophied or just somewhat specific to avoid them being distracted from more serious, intelligent, and global tasks. This is why studying in the elements department, as strange as it may seem, is more difficult for those with a parent psychotype rather than those with a child psychotype. Because elements cannot be comprehended. They are not information-based, they are energy-based. Therefore, they can only be felt, experienced. Because we can only comprehend that which contains a component of information to a greater degree. And on the other hand, to feel that which has an energetic component. Did I explain it clearly enough? Respectively, children as well as people with a child psychotype have their lower energetic bodies more developed. The bodies that are part of the subconscious. Developed here means that they are trained and that their attention trait is present on these levels to a greater degree. People with a parent psychotype have majorly developed higher subtle bodies from the mental body up. Respectively, their attentiveness trait is mainly realized within the informational layers of consciousness. And since we are currently speaking about the elements, that is, about the sensitive perception, then naturally people with a child psychotype will have an easier time achieving results. I'm saying this so that people with a parent psychotype prepare themselves for the fact that it may be a bit difficult, especially if you haven't developed these qualities before or haven't learned to pay attention to your own bodily sensations. I hope you have learned to do so. You did? That's good. Then you will have it easier during this course in this department.